There's the baby, the little, little knees up there. You see oh, the little head, oh. the chest, and then the knee right there. Okay. So, Crystal, what's your gut? I think it's a girl. Aaron, you think it's a boy? I'm guessing boy. I'm gonna go with girl too. <gasps> Did I see a thing? Yep. It's a girl. It's a girl. Yay! It's not a boy. <laughs> Look at the legs kicking. Are you someone who likes to be pregnant? Are I you do. one of those women I who do. likes it? Oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how you do it because I, I love my, my daughter and I'm happy to be having a baby, but I'm, I definitely don't love being pregnant. <laughs> so you just, it's kind of It's just been for natural you. for me. Yeah, it's just, I love the feeling of pregnancy and just the whole process. It's, it's just amazing. Crystal has nine kids, three biological and six adopted. But the baby she's carrying right now isn't hers. I'm four weeks away from giving birth and it's, you know, everything that I put into my body and everything that I do is for my baby that's growing inside of me. What's it like to be carrying a baby that's not yours? I feel like it's kind of my responsibility to make sure this baby is as healthy as possible as I would with my own. So you don't feel um, any kind of maternal way toward the baby? Not at all. Really? <laughs> yeah. I think there's a lot of negativity about surrogacy out there, like the surrogate goes crazy and takes the baby. I get the question all the time, like, aren't you so attached? I could never do that, you know, and just give this baby away. Going into it, I had to really put a mindset of, it's not my baby. This is Crystal's second time as a surrogate. She lives in Arizona, but the baby growing inside her is from China. Does it feel different than when you heard your, your own kid's heartbeat? Uh, a little bit. It's more like, I can't wait to tell them. How will you communicate with them and tell them? So there's a chat, or there's an app called WeChat, and it translates back and forth. So are they waiting to hear from you right They're now? They're waiting. They've been waiting all day. They sent a message this morning saying, we're so nervous. <laughs> so the dad texts back an emoji of like bouncing buns. <laughs> <laughs> and they use a lot of emojis when they text back, which is really cute. It's kind of surreal that you're communicating with the parents of the baby inside of you in emojis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so reflective of our time. It really is. So a lot of folks come to the United States because it's regulated. We have laws that allow them to get their names on the original birth certificate as the only legally recognized parents. Anybody who's born here in the United States, regardless of who their parents are, is a US citizen. The majority of surrogacy pregnancies in the U.S. are done with gestational carriers. Hi! That's the name for a surrogate who has no biological connection to the child she's carrying. In just 10 years, the number of babies born by gestational carriers more than tripled. Hi, Hi. Can you use your words? Hi. <laughs> when we got all the legal contracts. For me, you know, mm -hmm. it really became very, very real. Yeah, it's not just legal risks. It's, you know, medical risks, right. financial risks. Exactly. Risks we don't even know about yet, because this is still a very new field. I imagine that there are so many complexities and even ethical issues with regard to surrogacy. There's no surrogacy law that's uniform in the United States. Some states completely outlaw it, and it's a felony to be involved in a surrogacy. What's it like to be working in a profession where, in many ways, the, the laws are still being written? It can be a challenge. So you have to surround yourself with good professionals when you're going through a surrogacy journey who know where it's appropriate to do this and where it's not. you want mango? Do you want to show the book? Oh, we have a book. So when Liliana is, is 
Franklin, when I'm old <laughs> enough. Well, like once she stops ripping books. Apart. Once she stops ripping books. Where is the book? It, it is there. I saw it. Oh, not that one. That one's. Oh no, no, the. No, that's the Christmas gay one. What makes a baby? That's the book. No, oh, that's the. Oh. Okay. Oh. We have a book called What Makes a Baby. <laughs> Which, which tells about this, the sperm and an egg and a womb. And in your case, yeah. there was a man and two women that, that contributed to you coming into this world and lots of other people who were helping along the way, I mean, including doctors and lawyers and... Uh, business yeah. professionals. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and there are many different kinds of... Families. Miro and Jeremy found a surrogacy agency which vets women who want to be surrogates and matches them with intended parents. Then they found an egg donor and fertilized her eggs with sperm from each of them. One of those embryos was then transferred to Chelsea, their surrogate. This is a thing here, I remember. All of this together, Before. plus legal fees, medical bills, and travel costs added up to $120,000. Hi, yeah, I have a two o'clock appointment. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> Did you envision helping the guys with a, a sibling project? It wasn't something we had discussed beforehand. I had emailed CFC trying to get a little bit more information about what that would look like if I did want to, you know, do a surrogacy again, and then found out that that the same couple wanted to do it a second time. So it seemed it's like awesome. yeah. the I mean, obvious it choice. A, a you know, complete complete sense. I'd expect that they'd want to do the next embryo from the other dad so that ultimately yeah. as many gay families have two children one at a time, mm -hmm. one from each dad. And and for Jeremy and for Miro, I think we're going to do it. We're going to have a great journey. Oh, Lienka, Lienka. Lienka, Lienka. New York is one of those states where paying surrogates is illegal. So when it came time to finding a surrogate to carry Liliana and now a second baby, Jeremy and Miro had to go out of state. The first time that we met was probably about, it was like two months after that we were matched. It was like a courtship when you're just kind of getting to know the person, you know, you are, you are not quite sure what, what, what is okay, what's not you're okay. You're in a doctor's office, she's partially naked with her legs up and you've just met. When I went into it, I didn't know if I would feel like I had to like love her. Here's this woman who is giving us this amazing gift of both like her body and her time in her life. And like, will I love her for that? Or will I just be extraordinarily grateful? And I think, you know, we became friends through it. I just sort of like intrinsically trusted her. Oftentimes, you know, I've made new friends and acquaintances and, and people that, you know, I've revealed to that I'm doing a surrogacy. The first comment is, oh, okay, well, do you get paid for that? How much money do you get for that? You know, you do get compensation for it. There is a monetary aspect, but it's so much more than that. It looks yummy. It's so good. <laughs> when I think about my relationship with Jeremy and Nero and now with Liliana, that's not something that you say, okay, I'm doing this because I want a paycheck. Somebody asked me today, does it feel like, like a business relationship or like a personal relationship? Now it's absolutely a friendship. There's still a lot of the very unromantic um, portions. I mean, our contract was almost 60 pages. The actual contract phase for us took over a month. So this is a, an example of a contract that you negotiated? Yes. So right here we have some of the list of restrictions that the surrogate has to adhere to during the pregnancy. We've got things like handling rodents she cannot do, no chemical teeth whitening, no manicures or pedicures. Wow, that's pretty specific. Yes, they get very detailed, um, depending on the intended parents. You know, a lot of parents want very specific things in there. No handling rodents? No handling <laughs> rodents. Wow. Yes. Here we talk about termination or reduction of the pregnancy if something is wrong during the term of the pregnancy, making sure that that's clear to the surrogate, and that she's comfortable with doing what the intended parents might ask of her. This is the financial part, health insurance, a lot of paperwork. Every, the doctor signs stuff, the parents sign stuff, the attorney signs stuff, all stating the same thing. And that's, we complied with the law, the surrogate is not the parent, the parents are the parents, and everybody agrees. How does the kind of pay 
structure work for a surrogate? Does she get paid certain amounts at different stages of the pregnancy? Any payments that are in the contract are not payments to her for a, a live birth or a healthy baby or even a child in any way. The payments are for pain and suffering and they're paid to her throughout the span of the pregnancy. Why isn't payment contingent upon delivering a healthy child? I mean, ultimately that, that's the goal, right? If they are contingent on a live birth or a healthy birth, then that could be construed as human trafficking or baby selling because you're paying for a live person rather than the pain and suffering of what the surrogate is going through for the span of the pregnancy. So I'm about to get my first shot for my surrogacy pregnancy and I'm really, really nervous. Can I ask how much you make from being a surrogate? Yeah. The first time that we went through it, we got 25000 and then the next time it's 27500 So every time that you do it, you get more. Do you feel like being a surrogate is a job? I look at it as more like a service, like trying to help somebody else create the family that they want. Any news from her yet? She's, oh. oh, she sent back. Oh. She put, last night I've been dreaming, dreaming of a baby in front of me to smile. Aww. So she was dreaming about it last night. That's so sweet. How does that feel? It makes it all worth it. All the shots and everything that you go through. When you just hear how happy and that they're just dreaming about this every night and just, yeah, it's just the best feeling. It's like the greatest gift you could give someone.